What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto, and we're talking about four different uh, Bitcoin derivatives, if you will, um, ETFs that are that are offered. Um, they're not they're not spot uh, spot price ETFs for Bitcoin. And I think one of them's even a crypto miner, but I'm, he, you know, Rex shares. Rex shares. You were the one that requested these. All four of these tonight. We're going to be talking about B I T O. BITQ, BITF, and BITW, and BITF, BitFarms, I'm pretty sure that one's not an ETF, but you did say, um, talk about these non-OTC ETFs for Bitcoin, um, and these are ETFs, yeah, yep, we, we do have Bitcoin ETFs, they're just not spot price ETFs. Um, looking at this here, from top to bottom, Kind of respecting your fibs a little bit, a little bit of disrespect, but more or less staying in, in the areas. That's that's nice to see. Um, yeah, interesting relationship though. It's not it's not normal this one. <clears throat> um, yeah, probably goes higher. Very strong on the weekly. You're at twenty one forty four. You can see prices at twenty three dollars, maybe even higher because again, this one's kind of weird, man. I wouldn't be surprised actually if you went all the way up to 29 at this 2272, maybe even the 2618, because you don't you don't seem to be following the conventional steps. Uh, you've got like a different personality on the fibs, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it makes any sense, but but that's that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm going with. So probably goes up. It looks pretty good. Um, yes, it's overbought. Yes, it's been overbought for a while, but I think you're I think you're showing strength holding this one two seven two like this. I would at least expect that you went to twenty three dollars. That's like the minimum. But truthfully, this this previous resistance zone up here, you had a little support right here to resistance right at that two two seven two right there at twenty nine dollars, man. And I would even bet you go a little bit past it because you don't seem to be stopping right at these lines, right? You didn't find it right at the one two seven two. You wicked a little bit below it. I would bet you wick a little bit above it. So maybe maybe you see thirty dollars or just below thirty dollars. But look at it on the daily, real quick. Dividends, huh? Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I, I knew about this, but I didn't know that it uh, had dividends. Um, that's nice. What are the dividends? Oh, they change, of course. I mean, yeah. Are they just different every time? Do they adjust? Is is there? Uh, I, I'm kind of curious, man. Kind of curious, but uh, they're not like crazy dividends, anyways. But still, it's nice. Nice that that's a that's an offer. You can get dividends investing in crypto, man. Um, but that's what airdrops are for. Anyways, I think this thing wants to go up. That's that's all I'm trying to say. I don't think it's going down from here. Bit Q, Bit Q, Bitwise Crypto Industry Innovators ETF. Um, this one looks kind of the exact same as the one that we just went over, actually. Top to bottom here, except you're above your 0.5, probably going to your 61869 area. Um, yeah, you probably break 1420. Maybe you get held down by about $17, but it wouldn't be crazy if you went a little bit higher either. Um, previous area of support, previous area of resistance, you could go all the way up to 1919, maybe even up to your 786, that's possible too. Not really a whole lot of love on these fibs, other than the 0.5, which isn't conventional. Mm-hmm. But that's a little bit more conventional. I like that, man. Broke above the 618 on your first attempt, checked back for support, and now you're on. Yeah, bro, you're you're at least with this kind of look, with how clean that is, I think you're going to 1651. I think you are, and probably past it. You probably will go to about $19 to $20, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think it's going higher. Nice volume on this like move up to that broke you out of this hole. You had an inverse head and shoulders pattern, kind of. It's a big head, man. But you got like the left shoulder, the inverse head, the right shoulder. Like you see what I'm going for. But it's kind of weird. It is kind of weird. Maybe it's not an inverse head and shoulders, but but still, very nice maneuver nonetheless. Let's see. I just want to check real quick. Something that's more or less irrelevant now. Yeah, nothing. Not really any respect there. That's okay. Um, daily. <clears throat> Daily looks strong on the RSI. Weekly looks strong on the RSI. The one hour looks strong on the RSI. I think the same wants to continue to go up. That's that's my genuine opinion. If if it moves down, it probably won't be by much. If it doesn't move up, it's just consolidating and it's probably making a move right now that's going to take it all the way back to this previous resistance support zone at around nineteen to twenty dollars, something like that. That that's what I'm assuming. So that is BitQ. Let's move on from there.
bitf and you see I don't see if I type in ETF like there's nothing there's nothing with the ETF so I'm assuming it's just the LTD here right bit farms and I think they are a crypto miner they, they mine Bitcoin but tomato tomato whatever I guess bottom to top in that 61869 zone first attempt I would think you find turbulence here for more than just a couple reasons, right? This is a classic zone to find turbulence, but you're also in a previous area of support that you held as support for a very long time. Just kind of, uh, it's like a distrib distributive phase up here, right? You aren't in the accumulation zone, you're in a distributive zone. <clears throat> and then you, just as quick as you came up, you went down. Higher low though, nonetheless. Um, I bet you see turbulence here. I bet you do. You probably will inevitably come back down, but I bet it wouldn't surprise me at all. And I think my last video that I made about Bit Farms actually it was it was like literally this day I said that you look like you're getting ready to consolidate, and that's what you've been doing. You've been consolidating. So I don't, and and you know I was thinking that you'd consolidate and then potentially move higher, and that is possible. But, but unfortunately. It's not completely unfortunate yet, though. You do have bearish divergence. You do. Yep. You've actually got, right now, I know it's kind of weird to look, but you technically do have triple bearish divergence right now. That's nothing to mess around with. Consolidating at a topping area. Volumes declining. Um... If you can, like really what you would need is prices to break above this and sustain. You need to get a day to close above that because if not, and what and I don't think you're going to. I think I think you are probably going to come back down. You'll probably see prices come back down at least to around this 0.5, somewhere below like $2.10, if not below $2 itself. And you might even be making your way all the way back down to like $1.27. And here you are at about $3 now. So I think Bit Farms... It's consolidating now, maybe it continues to do so, but at some point, some point soon, it probably breaks to the downside. And if not, again, all you really need to do is have a day close above $3.17. That's my that's my two cents, so yeah. Yep. I don't really got anything else to add to that. I'll show you what I mean by triple bearish divergence, okay, and why it's kind of convoluted to look at. Um, <clears throat> so here your first peak is, right? You've got your high here. All these peaks on the RSI, wherever you are, it's based on the closing basis. So for the green days, that's here. Green day here, peak here. Next peak was here, green day here. So bearish divergence was formed. And it hasn't been, you haven't seen the move, the repercussions of that yet. You even had another day that closed higher here. And then you had a slightly lower pip. So that's bearish divergence. That's double bearish divergence, right? Even with the slight, that is double bearish divergence. And yes, you did have a higher price up here, but that's not where it closed. These are red candles. It closed down here, so your higher close was this green candle. Same thing with all these. Yes, you closed down here in relative to where these candles opened or where they wicked, but this still is the highest daily close you had with less volume. And again, lower. This is one, two, three drives of bearish divergence. You don't want to mess around with that, man. I would, I would say perfect time to get the hell out, but you never know. You never know with these things, man. Um, but it's had a nice run up, you know, no shame in that. It's just going to form a higher low and then continue to build up after that. But without any, uh, any more of that, let's move on to BitW. BitW, Bitwise, 10 Crypto. You said not e uh, OTC. So we're going to do Web3 ETF. And if that's not right, well, I don't, that's BWeb, so no. You said not OTC, Mr. Rex Shares. But all I have is the OTC option. So guess what? You're getting the OTC option. Um, weekly. Look at that. I like that. Oh, yeah. Accumulation zone. Little fake out zone. More accumulation. A lot of volume. Broke out recently. You're above your green line. You're consolidating above your green line. All the right things, man. All the right things for prices to go higher. And maybe not immediately, but just overall. Um, yeah, you probably come down immediately, like like in the more immediate term. You probably do come down to around seventeen dollars there, right around this three eight two. I would bet. Um, maybe you even go lower. That's possible. 
Um, let's see though. Yeah, you could go lower. You could go to thirteen dollars, something like that. What would that be on that original? I actually want to take this top here. That'd be like your two three six right there at your point five. Maybe not that one. Maybe this one. I don't know, man. 382 right here on this top to bottom and the 382 right here from this bottom to top, they line up pretty well. Right there at about $13. Between $12.77 and $13.23 there. Yeah, kind of a previous area of resistance. I bet you come down. I do. Um, ooh I don't know, man. This daily, daily RSI looks pretty productive. Um, mm, the price action doesn't, though. Ooh, maybe it's not productive. Maybe it is actually bad. Lower lower highs, lower lows. And yeah. Yeah, you probably go lower. I'm thinking around thirteen dollars. It's probably probably where you're gonna go. And then ultimately, you know, after that, you're probably gonna go higher than this. Thirteen dollars would be a higher low all in all. Um I don't know how long it would take you to get down to thirteen dollars. It could take you a week, it could take you months, multiple months. Um, it could take you one month, who knows, but after that, after you see this 382, no, not the 382, sorry, after you see $13, right there, like right around there, a positive reaction off of that previous resistance zone, you probably do make your way up to this 61869 area, if I really had to guess. I actually wonder, because that's like right off your 382. Yeah, yeah, 786, 886, yeah. So somewhere around 36 48 dollars but that that would probably be I would think that that would come around the having if not after the having that you'd see prices higher or not higher than this but like up at these levels above 35 dollars but immediate term probably going down so that's that's all I got for you man that's that's the four bit o bit q bit farms bit y or bit w um, that's it, man. That's it. So if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. I appreciate all of you very much. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. Bye-bye.